across straight over to Westminster uh, and welcome the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, uh, Mel Stride, to the programme. Good morning to you, sir. Um, I want to talk, since we were talking Good about... Good morning. Uh, Ramaphosa. Good morning. And the unions there. Let's talk, shall we, about these rail strikes. Uh, lots of criticism that this is now going to disrupt uh, working people, their Christmases, when they're trying to be with loved ones after all the difficulties of COVID, keeping people's apart as well. Uh, the government needs to get a grip of this. Well, no, what we need is we need uh, sensible engagement and talking, uh, particularly from the trade unions, rather than rushing into uh, these strikes, which, as you say, given the dates that they've announced, are going to be incredibly disruptive across the festive period. And bear in mind the serious consequences of strikes. People that have medical appointments, have important family engagements to catch up with and so on. And this is happening at a time where, during the pandemic, of course, huge support went into uh, our rail sector, and rightly so. Much of that to protect the jobs of those that are working here. And what we really need are further discussions between the unions, the employers and network rail to really come up with something that's fair to taxpayers, fair to the passengers, and critically make sure that a rail industry that is still not back up to full capacity uh, has a, a viable and prosperous future. I, I don't so know I if you heard our former, uh, our guest on the newspapers this morning, strike. David Meller, former Chief Secretary to the Treasury, saying it's very simple, really. You need to honour that 2019 uh, man uh, manifesto pledge to legislate to prevent strikes by offering a uh, minimum level of service. And that would mean we wouldn't have any of this disruption. Why don't you follow up with that? Well, that, 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 well, 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 that, that is a, a bill that is being uh, introduced. So that is exactly the path that we're going down. Clearly, legislation takes time uh, to reach the statute book. But I think we have recognised, and it is in our manifesto, there's a very, very strong case for that, and we intend to deliver on it. But as regards the current situation of where we are at the moment, I know the Secretary of State for Transport is meeting uh, the leadership of the, the RMT uh, later uh, this week. There will be further discussions to be had there. But most of what needs to be done here really is between the unions uh, and the uh, air train em uh, employers uh, and also uh, Network Rail. And they really need to be getting down to those discussions and pushing things forward rather than coming out with these strikes at the worst possible time uh, for the general population. So, Mel, GB News has an exclusive story today. In Blackpool, a hotel has kicked out Brits, including a veteran, um, in favour of asylum seekers. Yesterday, we had Keir Starmer talking much tougher on controlling immigration than Rishi Sunak. Isn't this an issue that you desperately have to get hold of or it's going to destroy the Tory party in the next election? Well, I obviously can't comment on the, the specific case that you've just uh, raised there, other than to say that it does sound... Uh, quite unsatisfactory, but I don't know the details. But as to the broader point on immigration, then clearly there's a huge amount that we have to do, and we are doing, particularly working with the French on the illegal uh, migration uh, side of things. In terms of migration more generally, we have made a clear commitment that through time we will expect and will be seeing migration uh, reducing. We've had an increase more recently because, of course, I think we've done the right thing with Ukrainian uh, refugees. There have been almost 150,000 of those that have settled uh, Afghans and those from uh, Hong Kong. And I think there are very few people that would criticise that. As to Keir Starmer, the one thing he hasn't done, actually, is to pledge to bringing down the level of migration over the coming years. So I think we are, in that sense, in a much clearer and better position uh, for most people. I'm sorry about the noise in the back around there, uh, most people's uh, uh, view uh, compared, to, uh, compared to the Labour Party. Yeah, uh, Mr Strider, I, I want to ask your opinion uh, on this uh, Supreme Court judgment we're expecting at 9.45 in relation to uh, another independence referendum. Um, Westminster, pretty confident that this is going to go their way, uh, but it will be explosive whatever the outcome, won't it, whether it's found in favour of the SNP or it goes in, in your favour, or indeed there is just an opinion there because this is such a hot potato, a, such a big deal in, in Scottish politics. It's never going to go away, this issue, is it? Well, I, we have had a referendum, and it was a once-in-a-generation referendum, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, the government's concerned, that has uh, settled that issue uh, for now. But you're right, there is this case, and I don't think I should uh, comment on what uh, may come out of the Supreme Court at 9.45 this morning. We'll really just have to wait and see uh, what they decide. 
finally, uh, a bit of a climb down uh, for the Prime Minister last night, uh, the housing rebellion uh, looming for him with this uh, amendment having to be uh, sorted very quickly. Michael Gove concerned about 47 MPs that uh, he can't seem to persuade with these top-down reforms on housing. A sign, isn't it, that although there is a Conservative majority, it's fairly fragile. There's lots of divisions within the party. Well, I think housing is always, as we know, and house building being a contentious and difficult area for all political parties, in fact, we've had quite a level of success. We've built two million new homes uh, since uh, uh, 2010, and we are uh, still committed to 300,000 uh, new builds by the middle of the 2020s. But as to the uh, amendment, I'm sure that's something that the Whips and the uh, government will be uh, considering. But the critical thing is that we do need to have this bill so that we can start to ramp up those targets. Because there's a fairness point here. It's only fair and reasonable that particularly younger generations have the opportunity uh, to own and have affordable uh, housing, as well as others who have benefited uh, from that over, over many years. But uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes. But I'm sure that there's close engagement now between the backbenchers uh, and the WHIPS offices uh, on that point. And a final point um, about winter fuel um, subsistence. 11.6 million pen pensioners in England and Wales, Scotland will start to receive payments up to £600 to help with their energy bills win this winter. That's a much needed supplement, isn't it? Yes, it is. And if you look at the level of support that the government has put in generally across the piece for the most vulnerable, it is very significant, and particularly for pensioners. Now, we've seen the Chancellor announce the continuation of the triple lock, for example, the uprating of pensions uh, by inflation, so that's over uh, 10%. And as you say, today, uh, we start sending out millions of payments uh, to pensioners as a top-up to their winter uh, fuel payments. So that will be payments of uh, up to £600. And this is something that pensioners are not having to apply for. It's something that they receive automatically and I think will be of, uh, of huge value to millions of people up and down the country, uh, some, of them, some of them quite vulnerable. Mel Stride, Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. We appreciate your time and for battling all of the noise there on College Green for us this morning. Thank you very much indeed.